Hey guys, this is Blue Forest. I hope you're well. So today I am doing part three of the anti-tier list where I'm taking an in-depth look at nearly every bot in the game. Like I said before, I am not ranking these bots from best to worst. That is for you to decide, but I just want to give you some hopefully some interesting information and helpful information when you're choosing who to rank up and who to use. So today we're going to look at the tactician class. So I should say about the tacticians, this is a very strong class. Some would say it's the best class in the game. Very worth investing in with a lot of really powerful bots with really unique and interesting abilities. So let's go ahead and start with OGM. So OG Megatron. OGM is a fantastic bot, very strong very useful and really built for long fights. He's one of the best bots in the game for long fights like LOC, higher level AMs, brilliance on the left side of AMs, just so useful, lots of utility. And that's largely because of his SIG, which is really central to his kit. So it's critical for him. You want to have him awakened. A nice thing about his SIG is that it does not need to be very high for it to be reliable, right? So he has buff steals. A few other bots have the ability to copy buffs, but he can steal them, uh, but he needs to be awakened for that. Uh, however, you do find that once you get to about SIG 30 or 40, he will steal buffs pretty reliably. He was my first rank six, and I have gotten a lot of use out of him. His cannon is also very relevant to his kit. Obviously, you charge up that cannon after six seconds, and then you get three of the faster cannon hits. Um, they are both faster and deal more damage. One thing about his heavy, though, is that because it is a missile-type hit that goes in a straight line, it will miss a lot. So you don't want to just spam his heavy all the time. You want to be selective about how you use it. But, of course, his cannon is also very important because it is what fuses debuffs and then allows him to eventually steal buffs, okay? So stealing buffs is a little bit of an art form. It takes some practice. You need to use special attacks and then fuse debuffs and then use your melees to steal buffs. But once you get the hang of it, it's actually super awesome because you can steal all kinds of buffs, armor, attack, special damage buffs, healing buffs, evade buffs. There's lots and lots of different kinds of buffs that you can steal. And that's one of the things that makes him so amazing in those longer fights. His specials are also super strong and they serve different purposes. So a special one armor breaks, it's one of the best armor breaks in the game, very useful against tanky bots like Grinder or Primal. His special two applies an attack debuff on the opponent and his special three is fantastic because first of all, it inflicts a huge amount of shock, which is awesome, but also it permanently charges his cannon. So in a longer fight, you use that special three and then you will have the faster cannon shots on your heavy for the rest of the fight. Um, synergy wise, he's great. Obviously as a Decepticon, he benefits from Seekers and things like that. He also has you know, really good synergies with his minions like Starscream and Shockwave. And then I should also mention defensively, he has a nice ability in that he can become unstoppable when he's knocked down, depending on lost health. So if you're fighting with him, you're taking some damage, the more health you lose, the more likely you are to become unstoppable when you're knocked down, which is just a pretty nice ability. So overall, if you wanna be doing things like LOC, you wanna do really difficult content, he is one of the best bots in the game to invest in for sure. So that brings us to OGP, Optimus Prime, another fantastic bot, huge damage so his base damage is pretty amazing even without buffs or synergies he can hit harder than a lot of other bots in this game his sick is good um so basically when the opponent is armor broken you'll land bleeds and they're very good bleeds it's not as essential of a sig as ogms but it's still pretty helpful he has some nice defense like mv1 when he blocks he gets an armor buff which is pretty good he can also give armor to other teammates which is really nice and then his heavy his rolling out is really cool because he gets over a 20 percent attack boost um, which is affected by how many teammates you have so you can really stack up that attack with his heavies for several seconds his specials are awesome and all about the armor break. So he has the most comprehensive armor break in the game. 
His special one armor breaks and also gives him an attack buff. His special two, very powerful, fantastic armor break. And his special three is very unique because he has permanent armor break. So you use that in a longer fight and then the opponent will have reduced armor for the rest of the fight, which is really great. Synergy wise, very strong, lots of armor and attack with bots like Grim and Wheeljack and Motormaster. But I really want to point out his synergy with Ratchet because this allows him to heal. And so for that reason, you will often see him paired together with Ratchet. So when he's rolling out, when you're using heavies, if you have Ratchet on your team, you have a chance to heal. And that chance goes up depending on lost health. So it can be really helpful, again, in fights like an LOC. If you take some damage, you have a pretty good chance to do some healing if you have Ratchet with you. So overall, if you're looking for a great bot for just general use, you can use him in nearly every other every kind of fight. Super strong, lots of damage, lots of armor break, you know, great against the brawlers or any tanky bot at all. OGP is very worth investing in. So that brings us to Starscream. So Starscream is a bit of a specialist in the sense that he has a unique play style because he is a ranged fighter very much. That's where he shines. So if you like to use bots like Blaster or Shockwave, he will do really well for you. If you're more of a melee fighter, you might want to wait and invest in other tacticians, but he's a fantastic ranged fighter. His SIG is awesome and also pretty important to him because it gives him his Null Ray, where he can nullify buffs with his range shots, and you can do lots of extra damage that way. His SIG does not need to be high either in order to see a lot of nullification, which is pretty good. I will say, though, his Null Ray does not nullify buffs from mods, but um, it's still really useful because you can nullify any buff that is built into the opponent. Um, his nullification um, can also increase crits and can deal shock. He has a little bit of evasion with heavies, so he can evade heavy attacks. It's not a high chance, but it is there. And his specials are also quite good because they serve different purposes. So his special one gives him a ranged damage and speed bonus for 10 seconds. So you want to use that a lot if you want to take advantage of the null ray because... His heavies, his range shots will be a lot faster, so you'll land more and nullify more. His special two is super awesome, very strong, and it armor breaks, so it's very useful against tanky bots. His special three is not that strong. It's not the biggest damage dealer, but it can also nullify up to five buffs. So overall, super reliable and a very good ranged bot. He's kind of ignored a lot. A lot of people don't play with him, but if he suits your play style, he'll do well. He's obviously the center of the Seeker synergy. He has some decent synergies like anti-evade with bots like Wasp. He gives stun to OGM and increases stun with Jetfire. But like I said, if you're looking for his kind of play style, I would absolutely take a look at him. If not, you probably want to hold off. So that brings us to Ultra Magnus. So UM, he's a solid bot, another ignored bot, not the most widely used. That's partly because his base damage is not great. It's good, but not amazing. Not as strong as some of the others. But Ultra Magnus is a very tanky bot. One of the most tanky bots in the game, and that's because of his resistances, which are pretty amazing. His SIG is interesting. It's decent, so he can get either physical resistance or an attack bonus or both, depending on what kind of team you're using. So you'll get either or both of those, depending on whether you are alone or you have teammates with you, or some of your teammates are dead or alive. It, it's, it's a very circumstantial SIG, but it actually is useful. And then his physical and energy resistances are pretty awesome. You can get them when you're attacked or when you complete combos, and they can be stacked up to 10. And so when it's when you stack those resistances that he gets super tanky. And he's just really hard to kill when that happens because he can take a lot of damage and so he's really great if you're the kind of player that you want a tanky bot or if you get hit a lot. He's really useful because he will not die easily at all. Um, he does have some nullification. He can nullify attack or melee buffs with his ranged hits. Um, his specials are decent. You know, he has armor break with that hammer of his. It's not as good of an armor break as OGM or OGP, but it is there. 
Um, his special two can give him a melee or ranged buff, depending on resistances. And his special two and three also have a pretty good chance to burn. So like I said, overall, not the biggest damage bot, not the strongest bot that way, but certainly one of the strongest defensively. And he's also got a bunch of decent synergies, attack and armor with bots like Grim and Galva and a few others. So that brings us to Cyclonus. So Cyclo, interesting kit, a bit different than a lot of the other tacticians. Um, he is largely based on his dark energy, his dark field, which is very important. His sick is really good because it allows him to inflict dark burn. You've seen this whenever you fight him, when he gains a bar, a bar of power, um, you know, he charges up that dark energy and then, you know, he lands dark burn on the opponent. And it's nice because it's passive. You don't have to do anything. And if you get that SIG up a decent amount, you'll end up doing a lot of passive damage over and over again. So it's a pretty good SIG. Whenever he gets dark energy, it increases his attack for six seconds, which is pretty nice. His dark field can also nullify buffs. And I most want to talk about his nullification of unstoppable. So a lot of people will rank him up specifically to fight bots like Motormaster, Tantrum, Demotron, because whenever one of those bots dashes at you when they're unstoppable, they will become stunned. And it, so it makes really annoying bots like Motormaster much easier to fight, right? So a lot of people will use Cyclonus, the right side of AMs to fight Motormaster. He's very much a specialist in that sense. It's a very unique sort of anti-unstoppable ability, which is pretty good. He does get some physical resistance when he is hit, I believe five times, and then he can also get ranged and melee bonuses depending on um, how many hits you do with ranged or melee. His specials are pretty good. Um, he's also not the biggest damage dealer at base, but his special one is armor piercing. That can be helpful. His special two, the last hit of it is unblockable. And his special three, definitely not the strongest special, but his dark field will pulse for 10 seconds, which is pretty good. Cyclo is the centerpiece of Hand of Chaos with Galvatron, so synergy-wise, he's good there. All the Decepticon synergies. He also has some armor and attack with bots like Tantrum. So overall, you know, if you like the kind of style where you have some passive damage, dark energy, the dark field, some resistance, some nullification, you know, some unique abilities, as well, of course, as his anti-unstoppable, you can't really go better than him. He's, he's definitely a very solid bot. So that brings us to Bumblebee, so D-O-T-M-B. So B, of course, is a Titan bot. That means that a lot of people get him late because they buy other Titan bots earlier. Um, so he doesn't get the most attention, but he is actually quite good and very fun to play with. He's extremely fast-paced, right? So he moves very quickly, and that's actually very relevant to him particularly with his SIG. So with his SIG, he switches between his melee and ranged modes more quickly, and it's actually noticeable. He also gets a very nice attack buff when he dodges attacks. And so if you get that SIG up, he's getting these very nice bonuses and he can do some serious damage that way. He has a lot of evasion, so very good defense. This is why he's very irritating to fight against because he evades a lot and he will when you use him as well. Um, he has a nice little ability where he can gain an attack buff at the start of the fight for eight seconds, depending on fallen team members. So if you have a five person team and a few of them are dead, you know, he will gain that buff, which is pretty good. But I mainly want to focus on the melee buffs that he gets when he knocks down opponents because he gets a very nice um, attack buff when he knocks down opponents and they can be stacked up to 15. Okay, so B is another one, not the greatest base damage at the start, but particularly in longer fights, you ramp up that damage, you stack up those attack buffs, and he can do massive damage that way. Um, his specials are okay, not the greatest. His special one can armor break. It's not as good as OGM or OGP's armor break as well, but it's there. His special two and three do shock all the time, which is pretty nice. And so, like I said, if you're looking for a very fast paced bot, you like to be kind of aggressive, you want some evasion, things like that. He's actually very worthwhile, and he's also got really good synergies like espionage with Mirage. Um, he's got a bunch of attack and armor. He's got brothers in arms with Hot Rod. So he's got a bunch of useful synergies with the Autobots, and you know he fits a very particular sort of aggressive, fast-paced play style. So that brings us to Nemesis. So Nemesis is an interesting one. 
I personally like him just because his kit is a bit odd and different. It's unique. So Nemesis is also largely focused on his dark energy and as well as his ability to copy buffs. He doesn't steal them, but he copies them. He's got a good SIG because it allows him to heal. It is similar to MV1's willpower in the sense that you use special attacks and then he will heal a percentage based upon the amount of damage that you do. So at low SIG, you're not going to see a whole lot of healing usually, but you invest in that SIG a little bit, and particularly if you're able to copy melee buffs and then land specials, you can do some serious healing, especially in longer fights. So it does give you some protection. His dark energy is good because, so basically he passively gains charges every 10 to 12 seconds. That rate goes up when he loses health. Um, and it happens passively and he can stack them up to 10 charges. So it's again, very useful in longer fights. He can only copy melee and armor buffs. That is one downside to him. I wish he could copy more buffs, but those are still very useful. Um, and the copying of buffs is also passive, which is pretty nice. You don't have to do anything. So whenever the opponent gains a melee or an armor buff, you have a chance to copy it. And the chance goes up depending on how many dark energy charges you have. And so once you have a few of them, you will find that you do start copying those buffs pretty reliably. His heavies are really good because they nullify. So he has very good nullification as well. He also only nullifies armor and attack. And he also gets... Uh, an attack boost with his heavies, depending on the dark energy charges that he has. His specials are interesting. They're not the biggest damage specials. They look just like OGPs, of course, uh, but they have a few unique abilities. So his special one can copy a debuff on him to the opponent. His special two will nullify. And his special three is interesting because it makes him unblockable after the special is over for seven or more seconds. So basically, you use the special three, and then he goes unblockable for seven seconds plus a half a second for every dark energy that was on him at the time. So you can get 10 plus seconds of unblockable, which is really good. The one thing to say about his special three, though, is that um, it's important to bear in mind that when you use the special three, you will lose all dark energy charges. So they will go to zero. So you want to use the special three pretty selectively, okay? Um, Synergy-wise, he has some decent ones like Power Gain with Shocky and Necro. He has a few other ones like Armor with OGP. Not the greatest synergies, but they're fine. And so overall, I would say, particularly if you're already using a bot like OGM or OGP, Nemesis is worth a look. He's interesting. And he is particularly good against the brawlers, particularly in long fights. So a lot of people will use Nemesis in uh, the primal fight of LOC2. That's a good example. So he's really good there. He's not the greatest against other classes, but he has some interesting things in his kit and he is worth a look. So finally, that brings us to Dinobot. So Dinobot, obviously a Beast Wars character. He's largely used if you're using bots like Primal and Cheetor. One interesting thing about him, though, is that he is both a Beast Wars character and a Swordmaster's character. So he has two of the best synergies in the game. Generally, people see him as an okay bot on his own. He's not the greatest, but he has a couple interesting things going for him, particularly related to blocking. So if you like to use bots like Thundercracker or Jetfire, you like to parry, He's actually pretty worthwhile in that sense, okay? His SIG is okay. It's not the greatest. So basically, his melees can become unblockable and get increased block penetration if the opponent is armor broken. The problem with that, though, is that it's very circumstantial and you want to get the SIG up to increase all of that. So it's not the greatest SIG, but it can help you out sometimes. Um, his melees can always be armor piercing. You know, there's always a chance, which is pretty good. Uh, but like I said, his blocking is important. So with well-timed blocks, when you're able to parry, it increases his block proficiency by 50%, which is a lot. And then also his blocks can deal damage, right? So whenever you fight him, you can see this. You hit into his block, and then he deals attack damage on you. And it's usually not a lot the first time, but it can seriously add up in a fight. Uh, his blocks can also armor break. So, you know, like I said, if you like to block, if you like to parry, he can be pretty powerful um, with that kind of play style. His heavies are decent. Um, they will always bleed when they crit. They don't always crit, but it's a pretty good bleed. 
And his specials are okay. Uh, his special one can armor break. Again, it's not as good as OGM or OGP, but it can happen. His special two and three, however, do give him a crit rate buff after you use them. And his special three does give him a chance to heal. Unfortunately, it's not a lot of healing and it's only a 50% chance to heal per hit. So it won't always happen or, or it might only happen a little, but it is there. It is useful in longer fights. And so overall, like I said, he's decent. If you like Beast Wars, if you like Sword Masters, he will definitely fit into that kind of team. So that is the Tactician class. I hope this has been helpful. Do let me know if you have any questions. I will do my best to get the other three classes out over the next week or two. Um, and until then, take care of yourselves, and I will talk to you later.